Hey, this is Carl J. Delacruz, first year nursing student. So, I'll be doing thorax and lungs assessment for this video. So, assessing the thorax and lungs is frequently critical for the client's oxygenation status since changes in respiratory system can occur either quickly or slowly. So, the first thing that we need to do is to review the client's medical records so that I can prepare the necessary equipment prior to meeting the client. So, I have prepared already the necessary equipment. Let us now do the hand hygiene first. So now that we're done, let's go and meet the client. Hi, my name is Roger Dela Cruz and I'm a student nurse. I'll be with you for your thorax and lungs assessment for today. So before that, I want to ask for your name. What is your full name? Cindy Dela Cruz. Alright, so may I ask, when is your birthday? December 9. December 9? 1993. Alright, so how old are you? 28. Alright, so you're 28 years old. So for this assessment, I will be needing you to take off your shirt. Is that fine with you? Alright, so first I'll be assessing um, inspection, palpation, followed by percussion, and then auscultation. And with that, I will be touching some parts of your body. Is that okay with you? Alright, so do you have any question or clarification before we start the assessment? No. Alright, so rest assured that the data that I'll be gathering here will be confidential between me and the attending physician that I'll be referring you to. So one last thing, I will be interviewing you for your history taking before we start with the actual assessment, alright? Alright, so for the first part, I'll be checking if you have any distress in breathing. So may I have your hand, please? Alright. So do you have any difficulty in breathing? Okay, so can I ask you to wear this drape and take off your shirt and your bra? Alright? Alright, so given that the patient is changing her clothes, I will be closing the curtains for her and provide privacy. Alright, so I see that you've changed into your gown. So this time I ask if I can touch your neck. I'll just be popping for any deviation in your trachea. Alright, right, so for this next one, I want you to stand straight. Alright, so I'll be behind you to inspect for the configuration of your chest walls. Alright, so scapula are symmetrical and non protruding and also at equal horizontal positions. Alright, so I am also inspecting for any abnormal curvatures in the spine. So for the lateral deviation, may I ask if you can bend your body forward. Alright, so I can see that there is no any exaggerated curvature, so you can stand straight now. Alright, so you can sit down for now, facing that direction. Okay, so I'll just be removing the buttons of this gun. So I'll first assess for your skin temperature and integrity using my dorsal surface of my hand. Okay, so there must be no change in temperature. Alright, so I'll be also I will also be palpating for any bulges, masses, or any abnormal movement. Alright, so skin is intact, no masses, no tenderness is found, and also your skin temperature is normal with uniform warm temperature. Alright, so this time I'll be completing for your respiratory excursion. So, I have to touch your back. So, respiratory excursion is a chest expansion. So, I want you to take a deep breath in. Alright, exhale. Alright, so this time I'll be completing for your vocal fremitus to assess for an increase or decrease of lung density. So what I wanted you to do is to count 1, 2, 3 whenever you feel my hands touching you, alright? Okay, I will be starting now. 
Alright, so your vocal fremitus are bilaterally symmetrical, no decrease or absence in fremitus. Alright, so now I'll be assessing for your lung resonance, so I want you to hug yourself like this and bend your, for bend your head forward. Alright, so I made you do that to expose more lung tissue and spread out the scapula at your back. Alright, so for this one, I'll be tapping your back. Okay, so you can put your hands down and relax. Alright, so for your diaphragmatic excursion, I will be marking your skin with a non-permanent marker. Is that okay with you? Okay, so this time I want you to take a deep breath and then hold it in. Alright? Okay, so inhale. Exhale. Okay, so you can relax now. I'll just be marking your skin. Okay, once again, I will be asking you to take a deep breath and then hold it in. Okay, so you can relax now. Alright, so to check for an even excursion, I will be assessing the other side of your back. Alright, so I wanted you to do the same thing again, okay? Inhale. Okay, so you can relax now. I'll just be marking your skin. Okay, one, one last time. I want you to take a deep breath and hold it in. Okay, so you can relax now. Alright, so I'll be measuring the markings that I've made earlier. Okay, so you have 5 centimeters on the right side and 7 centimeters on the left side. So that means your left diaphragmatic excursion is 7 centimeters and your right is 5 centimeters. So that is an uneven excursion. Alright, so this time I'll be auscultating or listening for your breath sounds. I'll be using my stethoscope and use the diaphragm part. Mm -hmm. Alright, so the diaphragm is best use for high-pitched sounds like your breath sounds in your thorax. So what I wanted you to do is to take a deep breath or just breathe deeply, alright? Okay, so I'm starting the oscillation now. So just breathe deeply, alright? Okay, so I can hear a loud and delicious sound. So may I ask you to cough? So okay, so you can cough now. Okay, so coughing clears out the sound. Okay, so I have heard a loud, harsh, and high-pitched breath sounds or bronchial breath sounds, but usually this is found in your trachea and your thorax. But in your case, I heard it in your lung parenchyma. And since I can hear it in your lung parenchyma, this is an abnormal finding. So I also heard some high-pitched popping sound during inspiration, which can be fine crackles. Alright, so this time I'll be asked to be for your voice sounds, starting with bronchophony. So, what I wanted you to do is to say the phrase 99 whenever I ask you to take your chest wall, alright? 
Okay, so the sound that I can hear is clear and discreet, so this is an abnormal finding which can be because of consolidation in your lungs or there is an increased density in the lung. So this time I want you to say the letter E whenever I ask you to take your chest all right? E. 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 Okay, so I can hear the letter A instead of E, so this, also, this is also a sign of consolidation in the lungs. Alright, so this time I want you to say 1, 2, 3 whenever you ask to take your chest wall, alright? Okay, so the sound that I can hear is clear and discreet, so this is also an indication of consolidated or compression in your lungs. Alright, so as we were assessing for your posterior thorax, I was also observing for your breathing pattern, which is quick and shallow. And also, your ribs are sloped downward. Okay, so this time I want you to sit here facing this way. So now I'm going to palpate for your anterior thorax. So I am looking for any tenderness, sensation, crepitus, primitus. Okay, so no tenderness or pain in the lung respiration area is found. Okay, so this time I want you to say the phrase one, two, three whenever I palpate for your chest, okay? So Okay, so there is an increased or larger vibration in your fermenter. So now I'm going to palpate your anterior thorax for respiratory excursion or the chest expansion, which is the movement of your thoracic diaphragm during breathing. Okay, so now I, what I wanted you to do is to take a deep breath, just like your posterior thorax earlier, okay? Take a deep breath. Okay, and then exhale. Okay, so I have observed a unilateral delay or an equal chest expansion in your right chest. So that is an abnormal finding. So now I'm going to percuss for your anterior thorax. I'm going to percuss above the claviculars in the supraclavicular space down to your diaphragm. Okay, so you can just breathe normally, right?
Okay, so just like your posterior thorax, I can observe asymmetry or different percussion notes. Also, there is dullness in some parts of your lungs which may indicate air or fluid inside the lungs. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you date for your trachea. Okay, so I can hear a high-pitched whistling sound, probably because of the cough that you have mentioned earlier in our history-taking interview. Okay, so this time I'm going to ask you date for your anterior thorax. I'm going to place the stethoscope the diaphragm of the stethoscope in your anterior thorax starting from the above the clavicles down to your sixth rib, all right? Okay. okay, so this time what I wanted you to do is to inhale and exhale through your mouth, okay? So this is to avoid transmission of sounds that may occur during nasal breathing. So, okay, I wanted you to take a deep breath and then exhale whenever I ask you to take you, okay? Okay, so I can hear some fine crackles in the right middle lobe of your lungs during your inspiration. So, this is an abnormal finding. Okay, so I'm just gonna take note of the findings that we have made earlier. And, alright, so we're almost done. I'll just summarize our findings from our earlier assessment, okay? So, I haven't found any abnormal curvatures, um, skin is intact with uniform and warm temperature. However, I did assess for the use of your accessory muscles during breathing. And an equal excursion of the lungs. During auscultation, I also note that adventitious fine crackle sounds. Okay, so I know that ineffective breathing pattern as evidenced by the use of accessory muscles while breathing. So for now, keep yourself ventilated together with proper breathing techniques, okay? So, you have to drink a minimum of 2 liters of water per day. So, this thins down the mucus in your um, long airways. And I guess that's it for our assessment for today. Thank you for your cooperation, Cindy, and I'll see you next time, okay?